On an iceberg, in the middle of the ocean, two men fight, and in the process, they slide into the icy water of the ocean. After that, the men continue the fight and surface together with the water in an underground subway car. The fight continues and they teleport through the transparent portal again, after which they surface on an iceberg again. The transition to different realities is repeated several times. Eventually, the dark-skinned man remains on the iceberg and his opponent disappears. Viewers shift their attention to other events and characters. Henrietta is a teenage girl who suffers strange bouts of undiagnosed illness. After moving to a new place of residence, the family once again faces many problems. The girl's behavior and outlook on the world has a serious impact on the mysterious disease. She takes specific daily medications. One of the first attacks overtakes Henrietta at school during a lesson. Waking up after sleeping at the desk, she unexpectedly pounces on the teacher with compromising questions about his doctorate and verbally exposing his untruths. The teacher, in turn, is indignant about this and demands that the girl go immediately to the headmaster. Moments later, the man grabs the student by the arm to lead her out of the classroom, but she falls to the floor with a violent seizure. One of her classmates, named Towns Linderman, notices that during the seizure, some objects in the room come into motion. As a result, the girl ends up in a hospital room. The results of the examination, which the doctor informs the mother, unfortunately, are not yet comforting. She has prescribed an increased dosage of medications to stop further seizures. However, most upsetting to the girl is the prohibition to drive a car for a long period due to deteriorating health. At night, Henrietta goes into town to paint graffiti in forbidden places, but the girl is spotted by the police. Henrietta is taken home with further recommendations. The policewoman gives the girl a chance to reform herself and commutes her sentence. After the incident, Henrietta's mother has a conversation with her daughter about her behavior. During the conversation, the daughter rebukes the mother for the fact that the family constantly moves in with the mother's new men and makes a strong case. The mother tries to justify that the last man is perfect and they have a chance at a new happy life. Henrietta seems to have developed a certain positive image of her father and her child's psyche, and when the mother stipulates that he was not at all what the daughter imagines him to be, the daughter takes this fact painfully. Further plot takes the viewer to the car repair shop, where workers unscrew car parts and remove packages with unknown contents. At the office of the company, an unpleasant conversation takes place between the owners about the problems associated with the delivery and the payment of the secret goods. The father denies his son a chance to solve the problems, dismissing him from further action. The new morning before going to school begins with the unpleasant news from Thomas Hope that the girl's car is being prepared for sale to pay a fine for illegal graffiti. The girl rushes to her mother asking about the car, but is refused. Her sister drives Henrietta to school, and on the way she tries to have a conversation with Henrietta. At school, the girl meets classmates who are gossiping while standing by their personal lockers. The girls look at Henrietta, then openly let her know that she does not belong among them, after which the heroine's sister supports the classmates. In class, her classmate Towns Linderman approaches the girl and informs her that he is researching the cause of seizures of various kinds. The guy is interested in her case, especially after seeing an anomaly with moving objects. Henrietta seems to take this information skeptically. There is a basketball practice in the school gymnasium. In the spectator section, Bill Boone, a man who owns a car service, hands over a note asking for help with his problem. After practice, the man lashes out at Clay Boone's youngest son. The father rebukes his son for being weak in his workout and in business in general. Henrietta observes this through the window of the school bus. She returns home after school, but finds that the garage where the car was parked is empty. The girl returns to school, where she finds Clay Boone and asks him to help her steal the car. It turns out that the car was sold to his father, so the boy agrees. Clay Boone steals a folder with documents and car keys. While searching for the necessary file, his older brother catches him, but decides not to interfere with his business. Clay Boone hands the folder and keys to the girl. Henrietta does not return home on time. Her parents are concerned about the matter. She does not answer her parents' phone calls. Mom decides to guard her in the living room. The girl meets Clay Boone in the car to thank her. A flirtatious conversation ensues between them, after which they begin to kiss, but Clay Boone wants more. Henrietta doesn't like it and wants to leave sooner. The guy turns out to be very pushy, which causes the girl to have another attack. As a result, the glass in the car cracks and the car is blown to pieces. Part of the apparatus throws the girl into a room of the house, along with the individual parts of the car. There is a violent rumble in the house. The chandelier on the first floor shakes, after which the mother bursts into the girl's room, asking how she got in there unnoticed. She manages to get away with it. Henrietta asks her sister for help and tries to explain the situation in the car to her. The girls go to the scene of the accident. 
There the girl discovers the mutilated car, with the wounded Clay Boone moaning in it. She calls emergency services to the scene and leaves with her sister. The girl asks her sister not to say anything to her parents. An investigation team is working at the scene. Meanwhile, Henrietta is in her bed trying to comprehend what is happening to her. Clay Boone is in intensive care. His father is informed of his son's disappointing diagnosis at this time. The girl's family is very concerned about what has happened to Clay Boone. Meanwhile, police have their first suspect. Henrietta, in the school cafeteria, hears girls at a nearby table offering to collect money for flowers for the wounded boy. A classmate approaches her and strikes up a conversation about seizures. Henrietta seems eager to tell him her secret, but their conversation is interrupted by a girl with a money box. Thomas looks around the girl's room and discovers the door from Clay's car. The doorbell rings, behind which is a policewoman. The woman tries to find out where Henrietta was at the time of the accident, for the call came from the girl. Thomas refutes all speculation. Henrietta meets the injured boy's older brother outside the school to talk. He knows that Clay took the car specifically for the girl and suspects that he has met her. Henrietta dodges the conversation, after which he gets into his sister's car and they drive off immediately. Clay Boone's brother continues to pursue them and the girls fail to escape. Henrietta gets out of the car, but the man grabs the girl and shoves her into the trunk. The captive, the man takes the girl to the facility. He asks all the service workers to leave the building, then frees Henrietta to talk. At this point, there is a violent vibration, which causes the trunk to cradle. The man opens the trunk, but does not find the girl there. Unharmed, Henrietta finds herself back at home, where her sister discovers her. The action shifts to the North Pole, where, in the middle of the ocean, a crowd of people are rippling on an ice floe. A bloodied man dies, while another man quietly observes from the sidelines. After the event on the ice floe, the man finds himself in an apartment, where he tells his wife that the problems will soon be over and they will be safe. Chinese Metropolis. The action takes place in a karaoke restaurant. Four underage men are singing karaoke on the stage of the establishment. At the end of the song, one of them goes to the bar to ask for water. After that, the man heads down the hall to another room. The man in black follows him, after which he grabs him by the shoulders and literally snatches him out of the space. They disappear in a flash and surface on the roof of the building. The young kidnapper clearly has grievances from his past against the older man. He says it out loud to him and wants to throw him off the skyscraper. At this point, another man intervenes to prevent this. Now a fight ensues between the men. Eventually, the young man does throw the victim off the skyscraper by jumping with him. On impulse, the kidnapper disappears into space and the victim crashes to the pavement. The young man returns to the family and informs them that they need to leave the house immediately. The plot brings us back to the protagonist again. After being trapped in the trunk, she somehow miraculously finds herself back in her room, where her sister finds her. Once again, the girl cannot explain the mechanism of her seizures and movements after the fact. At this time, a car pulls up to the house with the girl's mother. Her sister asks Henrietta to tell her own mother everything, but the girl refuses. At the car service building, Clay Boone's brother tries to understand what happened and how Henrietta could disappear from the trunk. He is utterly perplexed, as it is impossible to explain. Suddenly, his father comes up behind him and asks about what has happened. The boy tries to explain the situation to the girl, but he does not take the information. He suspects his business rivals of revenge, for they have failed them with the goods. Henrietta, with her mother, again goes to the girl's doctor by car. During a stop at a traffic light, the girl's mother says something animatedly, but her daughter is distracted. Henrietta is overcome with memories of molestation by the boy. She is close to having another attack, but her mother manages to calm her down. During a meeting with the doctor, Henrietta tries to find out if close physical contact with certain people can cause seizures. True, the girl talks more in hints, but does not reveal the full truth. Judging by the look on her face, her mother suspects something. Tentatively, the doctor diagnoses medial temporal sclerosis. He is convinced that similar symptoms occur with this abnormality and prescribes new medications for the girl that are sure to treat her seizure syndromes. It is clear from Henrietta's reaction that she does not believe these medications will help. She only smiles with pretense. The mother tries to support her daughter by talking about happiness in the new town, but she doesn't seem to believe it all the way herself. She leads Henrietta at the drugstore, where the girl is later to be picked up by Thomas Hope. The girl takes the new medicine prescribed by the doctor after all. The girl catches Thomas at his place of work, a billiard club. In the process of fixing one of the pool lanes, the man strikes up a conversation with Henrietta. He tells the girl of his suspicions about the girl's involvement in the Clay Boone incident. Thomas lets her know that he found car parts in the bedroom and warns her of the danger posed by the family of the injured boy.
At the police station, the female police chief investigates the cause of the accident. He advises her not to get involved with the Boone family. Thomas drops the girl off at home. At home, there is a conversation with Henrietta and her sister, who asked her to tell her mother's story. Henrietta is absolutely adamant, for the family treats her as if she were mentally ill. The daughter is back in her room, listening to music and drawing. Now, we see a large bruise on her left leg. She suddenly remembers to return the paperwork to Bill Boone's file cabinet. Henrietta goes to Bill Boone Motors to settle things. There she catches Bill Boone with his mistress, but she remains unnoticed and successfully puts the file in the right drawer. The girl returns home again, and once again her memories of molestation come flooding back. It seems that she really likes him. On a new school morning, Henrietta tries to be friendly and welcoming. Upon entering the cafeteria, the girl hesitates to sit among her peers and chooses a separate table. A classmate joins her and starts talking about the girl's superpowers. It seems easier for her to believe it's just a disease. Meanwhile, Bill Boone is having a conversation in jail with a suspect in several cases. The policewoman notices that the warden and Bill Boone have some business together. Bill Boone's older brother, Clay Boone, spends time with him in the emergency room. They talk, during which the brother tries to find Henrietta's information on his phone, which proves unsuccessful. Clay Boone is still in a coma. Bill Boone catches up with the girl on the street as she returns home from school. The man persuades the girl to talk to him about a favor. He pretends to be nice to her. Thomas visits Cleo Coles at the cafe where she works. The woman shares with him her concerns about the possibility of her daughter's illness worsening. During the trip, Bill Boone puts psychological pressure on the girl and takes her to a remote forestry farm near the Canadian border. Bill Boone suggests that she ostensibly point to someone who might have been involved in the boyfriend incident. In reality, the man is just pulling off a drug deal and continues to put psychological pressure on the girl. On the way back, Bill Boone's car is spotted by a policewoman who writes a ticket to one of the drivers on the highway. She is surprised. Henrietta returns home after all. Her sister is very worried about Henrietta's fate and offers to help the girl. They have heart-to-heart -heart talk and smoke weed. The sister opens Henrietta's soul and remembers her dead mother. The girl shares her feelings and tries to support her sister in her worries. A warm friendship seems to develop between them. A policewoman visits Cleo Coles in a cafe to talk about Bill Boone and Henrietta. The girl is called back to the principal's office about a teacher precedent and a seizure in connection with it. The teacher wants to smooth things over, but Henrietta proves her point and comes out the victor. After leaving the principal's office, Henrietta learns from her sister that Cleo Coles is awake. The girl has another seizure and suffocates in the bathroom. The toilet mirrors burst, the doors close, and the windows fly out due to the terrible pulse pressure. Her sister runs away and Henrietta finds herself lying on the floor in her room among the shards of glass. She cries and replaying the memories of the molestation, but dons the positive outcome of the encounter. Her face displays an expression of happiness and confusion at the same time. 